Hi, this is Eros from Colorized Cinema C. Our team has colorized the 1944 American film, noir drama film, Address Unknown, directed by William Cameron Menzies and starring Paul Lucas. If you want to watch more colorized movies like this and receive notifications, click the link in the description or comments section. Join our newsletter and get notified about the latest classic movies we have colorized. Now, let the time traveling begin. Thanks for all he's done for us. San Francisco. <laughs> uh, you know, I wish we weren't going. Why is it that the trip is always so exciting until the night before you go and then, then you get almost sick with wanting to stay? <laughs> <laughs> it's the warmth you're leaving behind, Martin, the friends. You never really believe you'll find anything like them anywhere else. I feel the sickness, too, and I'm not going. I wish you were. Now, Martin, didn't we agree that I would stay and run the gallery and you would do the buying and Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (laughs) A bit more wine, you think, huh? A bit more than a bit. (laughs) Well, you won't find better wine than this in Germany, Martin. Hungry, 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 hungry. These young men are hungry, Mama. That's good. Then they'll enjoy their dinner. What do we eat, Mama? What do we eat, Mom? When Henry's comes home. Please. When will I come home? When will I come home? Soon, now run along and wash your hands. I'm coming. I'm going Hello, to Ah, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do in Germany. They are so American. Well, so are you. Oh, that's not what I mean. The way they speak German. Ich bin am gutem Yankim. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, Well, it won't be so bad. After all, the Germany you're taking them back to, it's not the Germany you and I were born in. The old Junker spirit, the Prussian arrogance and militarism are gone. It's it's, it's, it's like the United States. Only no baseball. That's bad. No baseball. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I were sure it was right for Grisel to go with you. This actress business. Well, I'm leaving my son. That's a fair exchange, my boy. A son for a daughter. You have Elsa. You don't understand. Grisel takes the place of her mother. Max, Martin, I know I'm just spoiling you, but would it hurt your dinner if I brought you out some Gänsegrieben? Hurt it? But what if it murders our dinner? Gänsegrieben, Gänsegrieben. woman at one. The surprise, I had a plate right in my head. Oh, oh, darling, hurry up. You don't want us to starve to death, do you? Heavens forbid. Gänsegrieben. (laughs) To Elsa. To Elsa. (laughs) Oh, I feel ashamed of myself when I think of what I'm going to miss Elsa most for. Why, Max, you never told me that before. <laughs> Gänsebraten, mm, schnitzel, Königsberger klops, sauerbraten, but sauerbraten. You're breaking my Spit. heart. Almost you make me feel that it's my duty to leave Elsa here. I'm leaving the recipes for everything behind mm. with Grisel. Wait till you taste her sauerbraten. Oh. You mean Grisel, she... She's not going with you? Max, I'm afraid not. But why? The plans are all made. Why, only a moment ago you didn't want her to leave you. I don't understand. What's happened? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was Heinrich's secret. 
I happen to know that today my son was planning to ask her a certain question. Is it? Yeah. You're, you're sure? Yeah, yeah, I have it on the best possible authority, my friend. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> it isn't that you wanted to keep a secret from you, Max. Oh, I knew, of course I knew. Do you think I'm blind? I, I've seen it coming for months, a thousand little signs. <laughs> little Grizel, married. Before long, we'll be grandfather. I don't mind it so much for myself, but I don't know how I feel about being married to a grandmother. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Are we late? No, no you're just no, on time. No. Good. We thought we were going to be late, didn't we, Heinrich? We sure did. <laughs> aren't you being festive? Yes, aren't we? Come on, join us. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we'll want to drink a toast or something. Mm-hmm. Mm Maybe. <clears throat> Do you want to tell them? No, you better do it. Well, we're not getting married. Why, Grisel? Now, before you get all unhappy about it, let me explain. Heinrich and I talked the thing over thoroughly. Didn't we, Heinrich? Yes, thoroughly. And we decided there was no sense in getting all emotional and upset about something that... Well, that... I can't help it if I want to be an actress. If I don't want to change all the things I've hoped and planned for so long. Can I? Can I? No. No, dear. Of course not. It'd be perfectly absurd for me to try to be a, a wife and an actress at the same time. But it wouldn't be fair to either of us. So I'm going ahead with my plans for a year, and when I come back from Germany, why? We'll be married. Yes, of course, darling. Don't you understand? Of course what? we do. There aren't many children who could be that sensible. Anyway, it'll be some time until I am a grandmother. <laughs> oh, that's something. <laughs> Why don't you know how can we ever do that? Go away. And you're not angry with me? Of course I'm not. How could I be angry with you? I think it's wise. In a year, you'll be back as a great actress. <laughs> you're a dear. Heinrich. in my mind is whether it will be quite big enough. Oh, nein, Martin, nein. With such a bed, you must take care, or else I will grow to fit it. Yeah, five more boys, and I'll fit it just nice and snug. <laughs> well, maybe next time it'll be a daughter. Daughter? A girl? 
<laughs> and don't worry, it will be a boy. Once Elsa forms a habit, you know, it is very hard to break her. Why, <laughs> Martin, say, where's my wrist? Uh, oh, it's a letter from Uncle Mike. Oh, what a student, what a student. Uh, San Francisco. It's nice well, to see Max's handwriting again. Well, well. He says, San Francisco is an empty place without you and Elsa. <laughs> Even the California sunshine isn't as warm as the sunshine of our friendship. <laughs> oh. oh, looks like a storm's coming up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that fellow is going to get wet. It's a baron von Freischer. What? Are you sure? Oh, of course I'm sure. He's a very important man. Oh, it's raining harder. Oh, he'll get wet. We must ask him in. Herr Baron! Herr Baron, come in! Come in, sir. Come in out of the rain. Hurry up. Door is Taking it all in all, Baron von Freischer seems to be one of the most gracious and charming men I've ever met. His family is among the wealthiest and oldest in Germany. Ooh. And yet when the storm forced him to take refuge in our house, you would have thought it was a castle as big as his own. The confusion of moving didn't bother him a bit. You might have thought the house was arranged for a party and he was the first to arrive. It is the sort of charm and courtesy that one finds only in the old world. All right, but what about Grisette? Let's see. Ah. Oh, he says she's gone to Vienna. Yes, and what else? That's all. <laughs> I'm sorry she left the family. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Someday she'll make us all proud of her. Ah, sometimes she worries me. She's so young and strong-minded and daring. Oh, she'll be all right. What about the rest of the family? We'll see. You go talk to her. Why pick on me? Because I'm the boss. Thing. I don't seem to recognize the brushwork, though. Whose is it? Uh, it's an unknown artist. Oh, a new man. Yes. Uh, my father just sent it from Germany. What do you think of it? I think it says something. Don't you? Quite, quite. Uh, I seem to feel a certain spiritual facility in it, don't you? Why, yes. Some artists, you know... Paint with their hand, others paint with their head. What do you think this one painted with? I wouldn't care to say. I'll buy it. What's the price? Oh, I'll give you a thousand cash. Oh, no, Mr. You haven't Lane. promised it to someone else. No, not that, but... Fifteen hundred, then. I can tell a good painting when I see it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Delaney, but that is not for sale. I'll meet any reasonable price. Somebody's offered you two thousand, I suppose. Oh, no. More? Twenty-five hundred? <laughs> Look here, 3,000. Wait a minute. I know you're an honest man. Has anyone offered you more than 3,000? No. All right, 3,000 it is then. I'm a very good client of yours, Mr. Eisenstein. It's only right that you let me make this little discovery. But Send it to my house at once. I'll give the messenger the check. I wouldn't give that outrage to my worst enemy. But I'm sure Father sent it only for a joke. Put it in the cellar, Heinrich. Maybe if she doesn't see it the next time she comes in, she'll forget about it. All right. I was going to write your father a letter today anyhow. I think I'll start off with a few things he won't forget in a hurry. Max and I used to come here years ago. Yes? Changed, has it? 
I've been living in Munich for 25 years and I have I've never been here before. I don't see a waiter. It's uh, probably an off hour. Well, anyway, listen. <clears throat> Mrs. Delaney is making my life miserable trying to buy the ugly Venus you sent me. You know, I sent him a very bad painting, a nightmare in oil. <laughs> and a very wealthy connoisseur is trying to bully him into taking $3,000 for it. Max is fighting to the last ditch. <laughs> Good old honest Max. <laughs> yeah. uh, personally, he says, I think you and I are very lucky that we have such a sound following for the gallery. That's admonishing me to be more careful in the future. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, that's all for that. And, oh. Uh, who is this Adolf Hitler who seems to be rising to power in Germany? I do not like what I read of it. Good afternoon, Herr Schulz. Oh, Herr Baron. Good afternoon. Would you come sit with us? This is my friend, Professor Schmidt, Baron von Fleischer. Hello. May I uh, take your hand? Thank you. So, uh... He doesn't like what he reads, hmm? Oh! <laughs> oh, the letter. Um, it's my partner, Max Eisenstein, in the United States. Does he know the conditions he doesn't like? Oh, no, no. It's just what he reads in the American papers, is it? I find that hard to understand. I myself would hesitate to form conclusions without first-hand evidence. You must set him right. I suppose it isn't easy for a foreigner to understand the agonies our people have suffered since the Treaty of Versailles. What years of less and less bread, of leaner bodies, of the end of hope. Oh, oh thank you. The quicksand of despair held us. Then just before we died, a man came and pulled us out. You are a native of Munich, Professor. Well, uh, you have witnessed this deliverance. If it is a deliverance. You know, there's a surge, my friend. A surge. Our whole despair has been thrown aside like a forgotten coat. No longer do we wrap ourselves in shame. What can be wrong about a man who affects people so? When people are hungry, they do not care what kind of a man it is who gives them bread. We of Germany have found our destiny. The future sweeps toward us in an overwhelming wave. I wish we could be sure that the wave would not engulf us, sweep us on to destruction. We must go with it, Herr Schulz. The days of hopelessness and stagnation are over. Our movement needs the sympathy and help of all right-thinking men. Men of substance, Herr Schulz. Leaders who can command respect in the fatherland. They are the men who will rise with a new Germany. The others... Come here a moment. That's what I mean. Chins up, heads high, strength through joy. You see, Herr Schulz? Martin! Aren't they pretty? Even in California, we never had better flowers. Beautiful, darling. I have wonderful news. We've been invited to dinner. The Baron von Fleischer. When? Tonight. Oh, isn't that a shame? Just when Grandma and Herman and Otto are coming. Oh. Well, maybe he'll ask us again. Well, the Baron is a very important man. Why, indeed he is. And it's a great honor, his invitation. But I've asked Mama and the boys a week ago. It's too bad, Martin, but there's nothing we can do. Oh, my goodness, they're probably on their way now. You better hurry and change. We'll dine at the Barons. I 
tell you, Max, I think in many ways, Hitler is good for Germany. <laughs> the man is like an electric shock, strong as only a great orator and a zealot can be. It is true that his branch of troops are of the rabble. They pillage and have started a bad Jew bait. But these may be minor things. The little surface come when the big movement boils up. The old despair has been thrown aside like a forgotten coat. The leader is found. Yet sometimes cautiously to myself I ask the leader to where? Publicly, as is natural, I express no doubt. I am now an official and a worker in the new regime. I exult very loud indeed. All of us officials who cherish Horskins are quick to join the National Socialists. But this is not only expedient. There is something more. A feeling that we of Germany have found our destiny. And that the future sweeps toward us in an overwhelming wave. We must move with it. Of course, there are wrongs being done. The stormtroopers are having their moment of victory. And there are bloody heads and sad hearts to show for it. But these things pass. If the end in view is right, they pass and are forgotten. History writes a clean new page. Clean new page? Yes, I've heard of that page. And how they deal with the people who will not join that overwhelming wave. Floggings, quarts of cast oil through clenched teeth. The people who disappear. I wish Grizel were back here. Around? He is in a study, Miss Grace. Oh, thank you. Uncle Martin? Oh. Oh, I was looking for Uncle Martin. Martin Schulz? Yes. He just stepped out for a moment. I am a friend of your uncle's. Baron von Fleischer. How do you do? I'm Brazil Stone. The actress. Oh, yes. I grew <laughs> Why didn't you let us know? I didn't know myself until tonight. I've taken the part in Berlin. Oh, wonderful. That's fine. You, you, you met the Herr Baron, haven't you? We introduced ourselves. <laughs> you know, she's determined to become a very great actress. <laughs> I'm sure she will be. Thank you. Well, you're probably talking about something important. Where's Aunt Elsa? Upstairs. But you better call out as you go up, or she will faint with surprise. All right, I will. <laughs> A very charming girl. She's studying in Vienna, you know. Oh, <laughs> I never saw a woman yet who didn't leave things strewn all over the house. <laughs> G.E. Am I mistaken? I understood your niece to say her name was Stone. Grisel Stone. Oh, oh, yes, well, that's her stage name. Her, her real name is Eisenstein. Eisenstein? Well, she's, uh, she's not my real niece, you know. She, uh, she's the daughter of my partner in San Francisco. Jewish? Why, yes, but... Oh, uh, your partner? The man whose letter you were reading the day in the Ratskeller? Yes. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how important this question is to us in Germany. But the daughter of a very old friend, I... I must be going. You are going to have to choose, Herr Schulz. You can't sit on two stools at once. At least not here in Germany. I understand.
We must for the present discontinue writing each other. You will understand, I know, that it is impossible for me to be in correspondence with a person of your race, even if it were not that I have an official position to maintain. Letter from father? Yes, yes. This isn't bad news, is it? No. We rise in our might. We go singing through our valleys with strong muscles tingling. Tingling for a new work. Then from the mountains ring the voices of Wotan and Thor, the old strong gods of the German race. What in the world is he talking about? I don't know. Well, look at that. We must, for the present, discontinue writing each other. Stand up, simple swing, correspondent, person of your race. You must be insane. No, no. There's a new censorship in Germany, Heinrich. We must remember that. I'm certain your father was writing this for the censor, not for me. I had written a few things in my own letters that might cause him embarrassment. It's no more than right that he should want the officials to think that he doesn't agree. But there's still a way that we can exchange letters without their having to go through the censor. set the new order, but how about letting me in there now, huh? Don't I uh, get a little time off for good behavior? It is impossible to see Herr Schultz without an appointment. Yeah, I know, but this is extremely important. I am sorry, if you care to tell me your business. I can't do that. It's a very personal matter. Wait. Did it ever occur to you that Herr Schultz might get pretty sore if you don't let me in there? Now you go in and tell him there's a man out here from San Francisco, and I'll bet you a steel engraving of Adolf Hitler, suitably framed, that he'll see me. You may go in. You see? What did I tell you? You wish to see me? Yes, uh, I'm a friend of Max Eisenstein's. We're neighbors back home. I'm yes. just... Yes? Uh, you are Martin Schultz? I am. You were a partner of Max's in San Francisco? I was associated with him at one time. He asked me to give you this. In person. Thank you. Okay, Kraut. I'm sending this by a neighbor who plans to visit Munich shortly. I cannot believe what I read in the last letter you sent me. I'm sure you wrote as you did only from fear of the censor. I do not write now because I doubt you. I know that you have not changed, that you hate injustice and violence as much as I do. But there is so much madness in the world these days that I need a word of reassurance. You must give me that word, Martin. I do not ask for a long letter, Martin. Nothing that will embarrass you in the office of censorship. Just one word will do. The word, yes. The 
answer is no. I can't believe he's my father. What are you going to do? I'm going to cable Griselle to get out of Germany, now. Wait. A letter will do as well. With a maniac like that loose in the country, I don't want her to stay there another minute. This is an important day in Griselle's life, Heinrich. She's dreamed of it for a long time. Yes, I suppose she'll be nervous enough tonight without any cables from me. You don't want to do anything to upset the leading lady, you know. We'll write her. Ladies, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, since we are opening tonight, if we don't get it right now, we'll never have another chance. Please, lady, hurry up, girls. Let's try it again. Ready, Miss Stone? Ready, Herr Director. All right, start again. the Department of Censorship, the following line should be deleted from this play. Blessed are the poor spirit for the kingdom of heaven, blessed are the poor spirit for the... Oh, yeah. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the wish of the for the kingdom of heaven, blessed are 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 the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, but look here. If you cut these passages out, it destroys the meaning. I am sure you will be able to solve that difficulty. You artists. What's wrong with the lines? They are not acceptable. They aren't even the authors. I'm aware of that. There is no need to concern yourself, Herr Director, with anything except to see that these lines are not spoken from this stage again. Those are your government's orders. Disobedience is treason. Can that little man do this? Yes. I'm afraid he can. shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Stop! Blessed are Stop. they which do hunger and thirst 
thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Stop, I say! Stop! Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I demand mercy. that this performance cease! Stop, I say! The director had nothing to do with this. I am the one who restored those lines. Oh, you are? And please forgive this interruption. Today at rehearsal, this man came here and ordered us to delete from our play the lines which I have just spoken. I disobeyed him because I believe he exceeded his authority. I do not believe that your government desires to censor the word of God. I do not believe that your government or any government wants to censor goodness and gentleness and truth. Fräulein, what is your name? Brazil. You would do well to remain where you are, Herr Director. Well, Fräulein, or is it a secret? You know my name. Griselle Stone. No, Fräulein. I mean your real name. The name you have kept secret. My real name is Eisenstein. I see. Eisenstein. I changed it because it was not a good name for the theater. It was too long. It didn't look well in lights. Yes, you didn't. It is a word you hear a great deal in your country lately, isn't it? You didn't. The letter J painted on a door. As if by calling a man a Jew, you, you robbed him of his humanity. As if you took away our hands and eyes. A power to love and hate with just that one word. Friendship, Martin, and for the sake of the love your son bears, Grisel, you must help her. I know that wherever she may be, if she's still alive and free, she will try to get to your house. I must hope that God will let her succeed. Heinrich and I commend her to your care, old friend. Our prayers are with you both.
Giselle. Go away. You will destroy us all, Giselle. My picture? <laughs> it sure don't look much like you. <laughs> a letter for you, Mr. Eisenstein, from Germany. <laughs> Did you hear what I just says to that dame? She says to me, Did I like her picture? And I says, It sure don't look much like you. <laughs> and it sure didn't. <laughs> Dear Max, Heil Hitler, I regret I have bad news for you. Your daughter is dead. Adolf Martin Schulz, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Protect, dear Lord, the life of this little child, and keep him ever as thy own for Jesus' sake. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. just came for you. I thought it might be important. Oh, thank you. Pardon me. A handsome young man, Elsa. I congratulate you both. Perhaps I should say the three of you. Thank you. Thank you. You sound tired. Five fine boys here and one in America. You have done more than your duty. You must rest a while. I think when the baby is old enough to travel, I may go away. Perhaps to Switzerland. That should be very nice. Not bad news, I hope. No. Uh. 
not at all. A message of congratulations to little Adolf. <laughs> Shall we go into the other room? I mustn't forget I'm the host and the father, you know. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing important. Heinrich, my son, I'm writing to you because there is no one else who can help me. That crazy cable, these letters in code, Another one has just come, and now even the servants are beginning to look at me in a strange way. Only if you lived in Germany could you understand what will happen to me unless they stop. As you are my son, Heinrich, you must see that there are no more. You must go to any length, as you are my son.
in the study. Won't you come right in? Herr Baron von Freische, sir. Why, Herr Baron, what a delightful surprise. I thought you were in Berlin. I got back this afternoon. Oh, I haven't been home yet. Why, you... You stopped to see me first? Yes. <laughs> well, sit down. Won't you have a drink? Thank you. I'll only stay a minute. Oh, I have some of your favorite schnapps. Did you have a pleasant journey? Not too bad. I ran into a friend of yours. Oh? Who was it? Oh, he's an artist, I believe. Uh, by the way, that was your line, wasn't it? Before you came to Germany? Paintings and so forth? Yes. And uh, have you sent back a great many uh, Picassos and Cezannes and things since you have been here? Few. <laughs> Thank you. Prost. Prost. You know, Martin, it's illegal in Germany to send or receive letters written in code. Yes, I understand it. Uh, by the way, that friend of mine, you said you met in Berlin. Oh, yes. Uh, chap named Otto Burkholz. I know no one by that name. Really? Are you sure? Of course. Of course I'm sure. Martin, you wondered why I stopped in to see you before I went to my own house. I thought perhaps you might have something to tell me. Something to tell you? I don't understand. There's nothing you want to talk to me about? No, nothing. Well, I suppose I should be getting on. I want a bath and a rest before dinner. Thanks for the drink. You know, I like this so much better than that imported stuff. But I don't think it is only a matter of patriotism either. Just that with liquor that has crossed the ocean, there's always something. A taste of something foreign. Yes. The meal, sir. Franz, will you get my hat and coat, please? Yes, sir, Baron. That's what I was talking about. Why did you interrupt us? Why did you bring that letter in there? I thought you would want it, sir. It was from America. you do? I shall have to try to smuggle this letter out. I write an appeal from a despair you, you cannot imagine. This crazy cable, these letters you have sent, I am called in to account for them. They demand I give them the code. The code. Already the results of your madness are terrible. I am bluntly told I must resign my office. In the name of heaven, Max, do you see what that means? Do you know what it is to be taken to a concentration camp? Would you stand me against the wall and level a gun? I beg of you, stop. We got everything. So you are all, huh? 
Elsa. Yes. Elsa, I know why you are going away. I know things have changed between us. Will you do something for me? What? When you get across the border into Switzerland, will you mail this letter? Why are you writing to Max? It is very important. What have you to say to him? You can send it by the post. Elsa! I cannot send it by the post. I'm being watched. Those letters from Max are destroying me. Martin, if you need me, if I can help you, perhaps I should stay with you. No, you must go. This letter must go. Here. Auf Wiedersehen, Martin. Goodbye, yes. to you. Well, of course. Close the door. No one will hear us. I've dismissed the servants. I warn you, Herr Schulz, if that is your name. I told you it was a crime in Germany to send or receive letters in code. Perhaps I should have added that it is treason to try to smuggle such letters out of the country. What do you mean? Last night your wife was stopped at the Swiss border. She had a letter addressed to San Francisco which she destroyed before we could read it. I thought perhaps you might care to tell me the contents. That was for Max. I begged him not to write to me anymore. That letter proved I'm innocent. If you had only read it. But surely Elsa must have told you. You, you, you questioned her, didn't you? We allowed her you... to go on into Switzerland. She's a simple, rather stupid woman, after all. Harmless enough, I dare say, without you. But I tell you, the whole thing was a plot to destroy me. There was no code, really. That's all it ever was, you see? You received a cablegram the day of the christening. You said it was a message of congratulation to little Adolf. That was a lie. If it was a plot, why didn't you tell us? I thought you wouldn't understand. <laughs> you have gone to a great deal of trouble with your story. But I should call it rather ingenious than convincing. Herr Schulz, I give you a last chance to name your accomplices. But Herr Baron, I... There were no accomplices. I, I am innocent. If... If you could only have questioned Elsa, I... I'm sure you would have believed her. We will question you. You are foolhardy, my dear friend. I shall go. But there will be others come to question you. And they will not be as gentle as I. 
Our government has very little patience with its enemies. You might still save yourself. But I told you the truth. Very well. Auf Wiedersehen, Herr Baron. Goodbye, Herr Schulz. And I advise you not to make any plans to leave.
from Germany. <laughs> you and Germany ought to get together, Mr. Eisenstein. Sometimes they find who you're writing to, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> now, they probably ain't got a system like we got. We don't send any letters back. Address unknown. <laughs> oh, unless we've tried every. And well, maybe that's the Germans for you. <laughs> I don't understand. I didn't send Martin this letter. I hadn't written him since. Hi, this is Elisa from Colorized Cinema. Our team has colorized the 1959 American crime comedy film Some Like It Hot, directed, produced, and co-written by Billy Wilder, and starring Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis, Jack Lemmon, George Raft, Pat O'Brien, Joe E. Brown, Joan Shawley, and Nehemiah Persoff. This colorized work is exclusively available for our valued supporters to enjoy. If you wish to watch the full version of our team's colorized work, Click the link in the description to know more.